have you considered and are you looking at how you factor in certification for health and modeling schemes into mm -hmm. this process? Because I can see that that's a bit more of a challenge when, if you look at the building certification questions in GRESP, um, they're more, they're, they're, they're rounded, their sustainability as a whole, not topic specific. Is that something that we might see or in a different section? What can you tell us? Absolutely. So, first of all, we do recognize uh, you can report on your health and well being certifications under the building certifications uh, name. Okay. Uh, we had long debates on the topic are they called, are we still talking about green building certifications or are we just talking about building certifications? And these two very similar terms. Uh, are we talking, is green building certifications, is that. Um, are those three words also incorporating single issue certifications like um, health and well-being certifications or resilience certifications? Or do we have to find a different word to define green building certifications that also cover these topics? Um, this evolves quite a lot over the last two, three years, and I think we're going to see additional ones coming online quite soon. Uh, so we're in the, in, a very, in the middle of a very uh, detailed process of evaluating and uh, re-evaluating uh, re um, the validation criteria for building certifications. Um, right now we do all of that in-house, so we, look, uh, we have a set of criteria based on which we assign each, uh, each scheme full points, partial plus points, partial minus or no points. Um, I, after this meeting, I'm, uh, I, I need to meet with the be European Benchmark Committee meeting to actually discuss the proposed, uh, one of the topics being the proposed uh, validation criteria for building certifications going forward. That's not, uh, that's not going to have an impact on 2019 because it's a bigger, it's, it's a bigger project and we have to announce it uh, to the market sooner. Okay. But one of the reasons why we're reevaluating that is because we see the need to make a distinction um, and. Um, quantify differently a health, a single issue certification like a well, for example, yeah. versus uh, an environmental certification like a lead. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll ask it to the group here as well. What what uh, what do you what's more valuable? Two identical buildings, one with uh, lead plus well, versus one fully uh, one with lead. I'll ask maybe to my colleagues. Okay, my, so, my so, colleague so how about a sort of evolution of that question? This right. is for uh, Joe Richard. Presumably, through your strategy, you've looked at has a modeling certification well standard and fit well as well. Is this something that you're, you're both progressing and looking at? Uh, and, um, and then to feed into Roxana's question, um, if you put all that effort in, what are the drivers for it? What, 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 what's triggering this? Because it, it, is, it, is, it, um, is it important that it's re uh, recognised in, in GRESP as well? Are we looking at well yeah. and fit well? Yeah. Yes, is the answer. Okay. So, yeah, I had the pleasure in January and a bit of Christmas last year of doing my well AP okay. exam just to understand what we might be letting ourselves in for in yes. detail. Um, so you saw the, the grid we are opportunistically looking at new developments. We, we, have, we don't have a huge development pipeline, yeah. which is partly why well isn't everything to us, mm -hmm. um, but we are um, and have explored using well um, on our development pipeline and we'll continue to do so. Fit well, um, I'm about to do my fit well ambassador exam as well, Just and we will use fit well as a means of getting out to our existing portfolio yeah. Um, to understand um, opportunities to, to do more, understand the results, yeah. and it will feed into the grasp. Have you done a well-being assessment? There is an element of tactically using FitWell to help us um, pump up yeah. uh, our um, coverage in terms of health and well-being assessments. Yeah. Um, to answer your uh, your question around we don't lead, have to, lead, and, <laughs> lead and well and lead, well for me lead and well has greater value than lead. I think there is a challenge with, I can see in terms of how you weight the relative uh, certification schemes. Some are pure green, single topics, some have a little bit of health and well-being, yeah. some are only a nod to certain topics. So it, it could become quite subjective in terms of trying to weight 
Um, yeah, so um, yeah, we're pursuing both well and fit well. Um, so we've got um, we're pursuing well certification in one of our new builds over in the city, um, uh, base build, um, and for fit well, we're currently mobilising a number of projects uh, across our central London office portfolio. I think if you look at Tier One cities CBDs across Europe. Um, I'm not quite sure whether the occupier. I think I think that the in, in, for the London market and UK market, we can definitely see an occupier market drive there. Um, I'm not sure whether that occupier market drive exists so much so in in some of our other cities, tier one cities, which we invest in. But that, so that's from a certification perspective. But what's equally important to us is the ongoing monitoring and verification of health and well-being performance. So we've just undertaken uh, an RFP uh, to look at health and well-being um, sensor technology uh, across our portfolio, uh, and it's really interesting to see what the markets come back with. Um, you know, you've got, you know, at one end of the market, you've got people that are offering, you know, investment-grade sensors, uh, I don't know, over a thousand pounds each. Well, well over a thousand pounds each. On the other end of the market, you've got low-cost sensors that. Yes. So. It really depends on, on, on the investor appetite, depending on which one you go for. Because from our expect, from our perspective, it's not. I mean, you'd, you'd, you'd struggle to put it for the uh, you'd, you'd might struggle to put it for the service charge. Okay, okay. And and a very um, pointy question: um, Did you participate in the housing model no. this year? And um, was there a reason for that? Did you? Uh, well, we, do, we, we manage Grisby submissions for about 16 funds, yeah. um, and really we're driven by uh, investor uh, commitment uh, and investor appetite. We had no, none of our investors coming to us and asking for us to participate in it, um, and, and therefore we didn't. And, and Joe, is that a similar, similar plan for you? Or? Yes, exactly the same. So we didn't participate, we didn't okay. have anyone asking us to, and, and realistically prioritising what we focused on, yeah. we felt we wanted to crack on. Okay. Um, yeah. I think for like our prime, you know, uh, our, our, our uh, office sector funds, yeah. you know, that are, that are dealing in uh, grade A office stock, then clearly, you know, that there's more of an alignment there. Yeah. What I'm more uh, challenged with is some of the uh, the balanced portfolios that we've got, or the FRI industrial portfolios that we've got, and it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Benefit process. Um, does anyone here have any, any, any specific questions? I've got, I've got more, so. I just want to respond to Roxana's question on the certification. I think if you've got a, a portfolio with a good level of general sustainability mm -hmm. building certification and you then go and fit well, I think it would be really frustrating for that not to be reflected in your press score as, as an additional kind of initiative. Right, right. Quite a bit There are obviously many ways in which we can recognize that, and that's what we're um, calculating very carefully now to see. Because you, know, you can have lead plus, uh, Brian plus, fit well, uh, well, uh, fit well, um, Brian. So we have five buildings that all are certified, all are, all are good. Um, but you also don't want to have a situation where you can only get the maximum points or the full recognition if you have a uh, how do we make certification? A question for Roxana on the resilience module and what your five-year roadmap looks like for that right now. I guess I'm part of interested in what type of alignment we might expect with TCFD recommendations, the big change to the CDP questionnaire and that type of, type of thing. Yeah, it's more of a three-year roadmap because with every module we establish a three-year ba baseline. Um, resilience is, um, in, in its first year was was a more fluid topic, so to say, as compared to where health and well-being was three years ago when we started. Um, so it was a lot of uh, about just figuring out where everybody is, what everybody knows, where, what can we ask about and what can we not. And we had um, um, an industry working group, I think uh, you attended, right, on, on Monday to in engage the uh, the stakeholders on next steps. 
So the plan is to align closer to TCFD to make TCFDs are, are an industry adopted widely uh, at the moment uh, scheme on uh, resilience. There are no in, uh, real estate specific recommendations, so they go uh, consistently across capital markets. But um, I, with the module, we'll try to adapt some of those elements specifically to the real estate industry. If I may ask a quick follow-up question on that, I think the, well, the resilience module this year uh, did have some prescriptions where it did sort of explain how the year two questioning may evolve and what the evidence requirements might be. Should we consider those up in the air again because it might be there's a sort of step change in the approach and therefore what was said last year has possibly evolved so much that that's not relevant anymore or should we still have an eye on on those requirements. The results are, are testament to the fact that they were not very strong, very robust, clean questions. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, the participants scored very, very high. We had many full 100 points um, mm -hmm. um, participants, which you could think, well, excellent sign of the industry. <laughs> well, yes and no, it also means maybe that the questions were too easy or too um, permissive in terms of structure. So how many participants were there in the a hundred something. Right. Um, sorry, no, I should have known this. And in terms of in, in terms of type of versus the health and wellbeing module, is it less or more? Or less. less, less. And um, one of the reasons, I think there are multiple reasons. One of them being the time constraints. Mm -hmm. um, having to do one module and uh, the health and wellbeing was in the third year, so many companies were already preparing for that. So if you were going to do a module, you'll you are going to do the, the health and well-being one, not the resilience one. Second, resilience as a, as a topic is about risk. And uh, when you go internally and ask uh, to go through compliance and get the final sign-off on, on reporting, you'll, uh, at some point, you'll talk to a compliance officer or to the general counsel or whatever, and they're going to ask, but is it mandatory for you to ask this <laughs> risk question? <laughs> uh, no, they're not. They're, man they're voluntary. Well, then you're not answering them. Okay. So I um, think there's, yeah, it's a combined it's a combination of reasons. And also because it's not as evolved and, um, yeah. and defined. Yeah. So we might, we may say take up, but you're not expecting huge numbers of participants in the resilience modules in the future? Uh, I think we can, we, can see, uh, we can see a big increase next year. Okay. Uh, I'm a Actually, uh, we've just started um, a tenant engagement program uh, across ten of our funds, uh, primarily where there's the uh, investor appetite to do so, but also where there's a large proportion of the portfolio which is tenant managed, uh, simply because we realise that if we want to achieve scale, 
um, in, in terms of our approach. Uh, and if we want to disclose to our investors what their whole building or, or, or what their entire um, uh, portfolio footprint is, then it's something that we're going to have to do. Um, so we're having face-to-face -face meetings with our top 10 tenants by co contracted rent um, and we're having a, a more light-touch email, com email campaign. So it is tiered, uh, it's a tiered approach. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it, it is um, a, a, a tiered uh, approach. I mean, we're actually going out to all of, uh, of our tenants of those top 10 funds, but we're highlighting or we're engaging specifically with those that perform um, uh, that have very high contracted rent. Okay. So, for example, for our, uh, our logistics portfolio, which is obviously FRI, yeah. um, actually within that you've got some pretty uh, engaged corporates around you know, ProLogis, for example, yeah. and you know ju just understanding what their sustainability strategies are, um, and then where there's alignment with our strategies, and then looking at you know shared landlord tenant initiatives around, for example, forward funding. PVs on the roof, or discussing with them what their electric vehicle yeah. uh, strategy is uh, for the centre, to, or for, for 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 the shed, yeah. just to kind of unpick it a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah no, but I, I agree. It is, it is, it is, it's very challenging uh, for, for you know engaging with some of these SMEs. I mean, what's really the? There's no real benefit for them to. Uh, yeah. Engage, you know, you, you have to find fertile ground to have a conversation with, yeah. and therefore, if you can say, okay, we'll do an EV uh, charging strategy for you for free, we'll do a PV uh, assessment for free, yeah. then at least it gives you something to uh, go and have a conversation with them about, yeah. and don't just turn up and say, oh, can I have your data, or you know. <laughs> yeah. So doesn't, doesn't this come back to sort of mutual beneficial? Yeah, exactly. For, for both yourself and, and, and the other. Yeah, I mean, we're doing free energy audits for our tenants in yeah. FRI properties just because we see it as, you know, short-term yeah. loss, but actually a, a very long-term gain. And from a net zero carbon perspective, clearly um, they're going to be very important for us. Thank you. And, and Joe, and, and it, and it comes obviously every real estate organisation is challenged with getting data from... Yeah, we share that pain and as, um, with everyone. And, you know, the same applies with, you know, with our long income funds. Yeah. Um, mm. They... They score three stars. Yeah. We take that as a great score. Yes. And so partly it's about managing expectations of our fund managers yes. um, and internally. Um, haven't really noticed any kind of investor queries around that. If we can explain it's a three star, this is why it's a three star, here's what we're trying to achieve with that fund yeah. um, more broadly, yes. then it's, it's acceptable. It doesn't feel great. Mm -hmm. um, but it's acceptable. Um, we are similarly using our, we have a, a particularly on the retail side, of a strong client relationship management program with our top clients um, and top occupiers. So we do rely on them to help us to provide information and the reality is a score going up and down can come down to has Sainsbury's given us data this year or not. Um, or Premier or whomever it may be. Yeah. I'm not saying they didn't, but, <laughs> um, but um, which it, it can be challenging to manage. But again, a bit like what uh, which was saying, you know, we are looking at longer term programs, opportunities in terms of PV or battery storage or what it might be. We aren't offering free energy audits at the moment. So that's interesting. Yeah. And actually, I think from uh, an occupier engagement perspective, it's not just something which the sustainability team is having to tackle with. I yeah. think the whole real estate industry is moving from real estate as product to real estate as service. Yeah. And therefore, the service which you're delivering to your tenants from a, a real estate perspective uh, and, and, in, and therefore engaging with your tenants is going to be much, much, much impo more important going yeah. forward. Yeah. And therefore, I mean, so stay, you know, there's a clear, you know, short-term advantage to us, but actually, I can see the wider business also ramping up their engagement, so to stay relevant in in, in the future.